Bonjour et bienvenue à la classe de maître Les Auditions, présentée dans le cadre de la saison 2021 de l'Orchestre de la francophonie, avec Jean-Philippe Tremblay, directeur artistique, et Pace Sturdevant, directeur pédagogique de l'Orchestre de la francophonie. L'OF reconnaît l'appui du gouvernement du Canada et Emploi Québec, île de Montréal. L'OF remercie aussi ses commanditaires, Kenimex et Panorama Media. L'OF remercie aussi les fondations suivantes, la RBC Foundation, la fondation Sigila S, le fonds AIDA de la fondation Jeunesse musicale du Canada et la Zeller Family Foundation. Welcome to this masterclass given uh, through our um, season 2021 of Orchestre de la Francophonie. Today it will be auditions and uh, we'll have our di pedagogy director, Pastor Devant, and uh, Jean-Philippe Tremblay, our artistic director. DOF acknowledged the Government of Canada's support in Emploi Québec, Ile de Montréal. DOF would like to thank the private sponsors, Canimex and Panorama Media. DOF would also like to thank the following foundation, RBC Foundations, Foundation Sibila S, Le Fonds AIDA de la Fondation Jeunesse Musicale du Canada, and the Zeller Family Foundation. Nous vous invitons à aller consulter le site web de l'Orchestre de la Francophonie, la page YouTube, le canal YouTube pour y voir tous les travaux, projets digitaux et récital des participants de cette année, ainsi que la page Facebook où vous pourrez trouver le calendrier des événements. We invite you to go uh, check the uh, OF webpage as well as the Facebook thread with the events of this year, and as well the YouTube channel where you'll be able to watch our participants with their digital projects and recitals. Maintenant, à vous. Merci, José. Bonjour tout le monde. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, Pace. Uh, it's a pleasure to uh, welcome uh, more of our players this morning. And uh, je vais vous demander à ceux qui jouent de vous présenter et de quelques mots sur uh, vos études, à quel endroit vous, uh, avec quel professeur et à quelle école vous étudiez. Uh, if uh, you can, uh, before you play uh, the excerpts, just introduce yourself and say a few words about uh, where and with who uh, you are studying. Alors ce matin, c'est les auditions et nous allons entendre des percussionnistes et uh, les corps français. Alors, pour débuter, to start with this morning, we will go to Jackson Kelly. Alors, le premier ce matin, Jackson Kelly. Bonjour, Jackson. Good morning. Hello. My name is Jackson Kelly. I am going into grade 12 this fall. I am studying with Jonathan Wade and Andrew Harris at the University of Ottawa. Uh, should I say what I'm playing? Sure, yeah, this would be great, thanks. All right. I will first start with Snare Drum, Capriccio Espanol by Nikolai Rimsky Korsakov, uh, the third movement. Then I will play uh, Magic Flute, the Glockenspiel excerpt from the Mozart's opera. Then I will play Sorcerer's Apprentice uh, by Paul Dukas, again Glockenspiel. Then I will play Colas Brunion. Overture, xylophone, and Porgy and Bass, xylophone, the overture. All right.
Thank you, Jackson. There we go. It was, uh, it was very, uh, very uh, interesting. Very great. Some great playing in there. Uh, let me just uh, say a few words and I'll let Pace also uh, uh, work on this with you. Uh, so about the Mozart uh, excerpt, uh, how, do you, uh, how do you find your tempo? What, what is in your head when you start this excerpt? Well, uh, I think of the music. I think of the, just the situation, the cute little magic flute like a little uh, music box playing. Good, so it's some, something mechanical a little bit, but also uh, lyrical. Uh, the thing I missed a little bit is this, if you can bring out a little bit the, this little hidden melody. Well, not hidden, but the, the lower notes melody. da da dum pom pom da da dum pom pom you know, he plays with that around a, a little bit. So it's just to put a little bit more weight on those uh, those uh, bottom notes. Uh, and it's a little bit of the same in the Corgi and Bess. He, he uses a different way to, to put it. He actually puts the accents for us, right? So it's the same there. If you can bring out a little bit more the accents, just little details here and there. But I, I really liked uh, the uh, Kabalevsky. Uh, magic flute. I thought that's what I asked you, but I thought your tempo was uh, was right on too. So just bring out those uh, those few little details. Uh, let me open the uh, the sorts uh, the duca the l'apprenti sorcier. Uh, how do you choose your tempo in this one? Uh, I mean, again, I I think of the situation. M Mickey Mouse controlling a bunch of uh, little groups. Mobs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Okay, cool. It's uh, it could have it could just a tad faster, or or be ready to do it a tad faster because the committee might ask you to uh, to try this again a little bit. And in this one, for me, I'm just missing a little bit the appoggiaturas being part of the melody a little bit uh, stronger. You know, smaller values, but uh, very very uh, musical. Well done, thank you, Jackson. And I'll let Pace uh, talk right now. Oh, thank you. Um, yeah, nice playing. Very nice playing. I'm gonna, going to continue with uh, what uh, Jean-Philippe said about the uh, Duca. Um, you heard the talk on French style, right? Okay, this is very much French style. Duca was part of the new movement to write French music, get away from the tradition of German Germanic music in, in French. In fact, uh, all the, um, all the uh, movement titles are en français. So when you see something like at, at number, um, you didn't play, but at number 22, it says au mouvement. This is very important. Do you know what that means? Have you, have you looked up all the terminology? Uh, no, does it, does it mean with movement? That's what most, Ang most Anglos think that. No, it's returning to the previous tempo. Or move on. So it actually, because there's a pew animato before that, then all of a sudden it's dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it, dig it. And um, um, okay, so at the very beginning, bum, bum, yum, da, 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 bum, yum, bum, and, and Jean Philippe was right, tight, yup, yup, all those grace notes, tight to the, uh, to the accent, the downbeats. Um, what instrument group are you playing with? Uh, is it not the upper woodwinds? That's right. It's woodwinds. It says détaché. That's a lot more for them than it is for you. You're going to sound short. They need to play short. So that's uh, now at number 18, at the R-I-N-F. Do you know what that means? Rinforzado means to reinforce. Okay. You're, you, you crescendo to a forte, then you reinforce that forte. But like a lot of French music, you've got this crescendo, you, you know, he repeats reinforzato and then pio forte, but you make the adjustments by phrase. It's not an incremental crescendo. You're not turning up the volume dial. Two phrases, right? Two three bar phrases, that's really important. And then you're speaking French musically. When you think that way, you see that a lot in, in, in music of that time, uh, where uh, crescendos or intensity happens by grouping. Uh, Richard Strauss does the same thing in Don Juan. 
Um, okay, Alborada. Uh, that's good, but what's your dynamic? Uh, it says forte, but I feel like it should be more of a mezzo forte. You're correct. In the score, it says mezzo forte. In your part, it says forte. We always have to refer to the score for information. I talked a little bit about that with the Mahler, where you play out a rhythm and people do it because of tradition, but it actually says in the score, the instructions are there. So that's very, very important. Now, Paul Perret, Detroit Symphony. He was a great conductor. He was an organist. He was a composer. He was a percussionist. So uh, his tempo was between 140 and 142. So this is your audition. The jury just said, um, 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 could you play the uh, Ravel, uh, Rinsky Korskoff, uh, could you play it faster, please? Let's try it. All right. Okay, good. That was that was faster. Now that's the tricky thing is coming out of those triplets into the into the into the roll. You don't lose tempo. Want we'll to try that again, and then we better move on. I'm really sure. sorry. I missed everything you said. I, I, can't, I oh. can't keep my head both ends. I'm sorry. Could you okay. repeat it? Yeah. Get into, the, get into the roll sooner. Okay. You lose a little tempo. And it's a tough spot. It's tricky going from the, the, the triplets. So try that at the, at the fast tempo. All right. Without accent. Oh, he needs his headphones. Yeah, sorry. Without accenting the rolls, you go right into it with the same same articulation in the triplets. It sounds like you're diminuendoing on the on the roll. Yes, that's better. Good, thank you. Merci, Jackson. Thank you, Jackson. And uh, we will now go uh, with Matthias. Bonjour Mathias. Oui, bonjour à vous, bonjour à tout le monde. C'est Mathias, je suis étudiant au Conservatoire de musique de Québec, en percussion bien évidemment. Euh, euh, mes profs sont Mathieu Pouliot, Alexandre Lavoie et euh, Angélie Caron. Et euh, oui, je vais jouer quelques extraits de timbal pour vous. Euh, enfin, on va commencer avec euh, le, la finale, la 9e de Beethoven. Ensuite, euh, des extraits du deuxième mouvement. Euh, des euh, métamorphoses symphoniques de In the Myth. Par la suite, euh, le, euh, la quatrième symphonie de Tchaïkovski, premier mouvement. Euh, et on termine avec Brahms 1, la, euh, la finale. Allons-y.
Oh, super, euh, merci beaucoup euh, Mathias. Euh, regardons des petites choses si on retourne, euh, on retourne au premier trait, tiens. Yes. Euh, dans, euh, dans le Beethoven. Euh, en général, Mathias, euh, si j'étais la, la police rythmique d'un comité, euh, il n'y quand, a aucun problème quand tu joues, quand c'est les, les passages euh, euh, qui sont notés. J'ai un tout petit peu un manque de précision dans les mesures à compter, euh, surtout quand c'est un très rapide. Si, par exemple, dans le Beethoven, ici, euh, il faut vraiment être précis quand tu les comptes à ce tempo-là. Euh, même le 7 mesure devrait être euh, vraiment, vraiment super précis. Parce que le reste est vraiment, vraiment impeccable. Donc, je fais un petit commentaire en général. Dans celui-ci, qu'est-ce qui se passe dans ta tête quand tu, quand tu penses à un tempo? Quand tu penses, est-ce qu'il y a des relations de tempo pour toi entre les mouvements? Comment tu, veux, comment te, tu conçois un petit peu ton, ton choix de tempo? Euh, je, je me chante le, le, le petit passage des cordes avant l'entrée. Super. OK, super. Euh, J'ai beaucoup aimé ton, ton maestoso et la, la relation de tempo que tu installes avec le, le prestissimo qui suit après. Euh, dans le prestissimo, j'aimerais un tout petit peu plus, surtout un bon tempo comme ça, Alain, un tout petit peu plus d'emphase sur les temps forts, juste pour me rappeler un tout petit peu qu'est-ce qui se passe, surtout. Juste me, me donner un tout petit peu plus de poids là-dessus, euh, Mathias. OK, oui, c'est bon. Ensuite, euh, si on va dans le Hindu Myth, dans les euh, métamorphoses symphoniques, bon, c'est un trait qui est très mélodique, mm -hmm. euh, qui est vraiment super intéressant. C'est vraiment une pièce euh, géniale. Là. Euh, ce que j'aimerais, c'est que tu trouves un moyen, puis celui-là, peut-être qu'on peut, qu peut l'essayer si tu veux le réessayer. Euh, la formule rythmique qu'on a, elle se promène un tout petit peu sur les temps. Hein, des fois, elle est sur un deuxième temps, des fois, sur le premier temps. Donc, elle, a des, elle devrait avoir des caractères un tout petit peu différents, dépendant de où elle est située. Euh, grosso modo, si je n'avais pas de partition devant moi, comment tu peux me faire sentir un tout petit peu plus euh, lesquels sont sur le, le downbeat, lesquels sont sur un temps fort, lesquels ne le sont pas? Peut-être euh, accentuer un peu plus là, sur le downbeat. Ça amplifie un peu la qualité un peu jazz de, 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 de l'affaire. Ouais, super. Veux-tu l'essayer? Oui. Ouais, super. Puis tu as, as quelque chose qui se passe dans ta respiration aussi. Puis tu m'as celui, celui que j'ai trouvé que tu faisais le mieux ressortir, c'est. Il y a quelque chose qui se passe dans ton body language, dans ton geste corporellement, et puis ça, ça donne vraiment le, le, le côté jazzy de tout ça. Donc, ça fait chanter un tout petit peu plus, puis ça, ça donne le caractère. Euh, puis sans le refaire, le deuxième trait du Hymn de Myth, c'est un petit peu la même chose. Des fois, on a le pom, 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 pom. Ou il peut être une levée aussi. Pom, 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 pom. Donc, un petit peu faire ressortir euh, à chaque fois. T'sais, il devrait avoir un caractère légèrement différent. C'est comme ça qu'il s'amuse avec le thème. Super. Euh, dans le Tchaikovsky, yes. la même chose un petit peu, Mathias, quand, euh, une fois qu'on a frappé l'Allegro con anima, un tout petit peu d'imprécision de, 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 dans les mesures à compter ou les temps. C'est plus des temps ici, là, mais que des mesures, mais des fois, c'est un tout petit peu trop tôt ou des fois, une petite affaire trop tard. Donc, vraiment, yeah, ta -ta 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 euh, vraiment garder ça hyper, hyper précis. Euh, on avait déjà parlé un petit peu ensemble euh, au début du Allegro con anima aussi, comment tu peux me faire ressortir encore plus euh, cette, les temps forts. Parce que c'est facile de se décaler d'une croche. Vraiment penser. La même chose aussi, qu'on aille vraiment, puis ça va appuyer d'une manière vraiment géniale la mélodie. Euh, Veux-tu l'essayer celui-là? À partir, de, à partir de T. Euh... Super.
C'est ça. Fait que c'est dans le bon esprit de donner un petit peu plus de poids aussi, puis de nous faire sentir que le, ce qui se passe sur le deuxième et troisième croche est un genre de rebondi à partir de la première croche. Comme ça, ça donne C'est toi qui vas donner tout l'élan à, à ce qui se passe dans l'orchestre aussi. Super. OK, I'll let Pace uh, jump in right now. I don't take all the time. Uh, just a couple comments. Um, there is a recording of Hindemith conducting the symphonic metamorphosis uh, with the Chicago Symphony. So it's, it's uh, on anglais, we say straight from the horse's mouth. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay. So it's worth looking, looking at that just to see how the, uh, in the, uh, the trend dot march. Bum, ba, ba, bum, bum. Bum, ba, ba, bum, bum. How those last two notes are played. Some timpanists like to release the second note. Bum, ba, ba, bum, bum. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting what Hindemith, you'll, you'll see. And uh, it's interesting, you, you used wooden sticks where I would not have used wooden sticks. I would have, uh, or the harder sticks, sorry, the harder sticks, I would have uh, preferred that in the Beethoven and then not as loud. Softer sticks in the Beethoven or in the Hindemith? Sorry. No, uh, this, uh, the your smaller, harder sticks in the um, in the Beethoven. Yeah, uh, hard these uh, these ones here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. And when you get to the Maestoso, you have to sing with the choir. Mm -hmm. Play the words, not the rhythm. Bom, bom, bom. Ding, bom, 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 bom. Beethoven going back to his Flemish French roots. <laughs> the small notes matter. Right. Okay. Good. Nice. Super. Merci beaucoup, Mathias. Bravo. And uh, now we will go to uh, Robert. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, hello, my name is Robert. Uh, I am a percussionist from uh, South Plainfield, New Jersey in the States. And uh, I currently study at Rutgers University uh, with Joe Tompkins. Um, so today I'll be playing four excerpts. Uh, first is from the uh, Sorcerer's Apprentice by Paul Duca. Uh, I'll be playing two excerpts from that. And then uh, I'll be going to Xylophone, play, playing um, uh, the Harry Janos Suite um, by Zoltan Kodai. Uh, and then I'll be doing Schumann Three, and then some Carnival Overture on tambourine.
Thank you, Robert. Great playing. Uh, Pace, why don't you start? Uh, I'll go second now. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, nice playing, very nice playing. The Schumann, the William Schumann. Um, uh, what's the snare drum doing while you're playing? Uh, they're playing uh, triplet rhythms. Exactly. Okay, so you're aware of that while you're playing. Because mm -hmm. I could use just a little more feeling of that 16th note. Okay. You know, the four against three sort of thing. Don't get wrapped up in four against three, but... And um, uh, maybe a little faster, but think a little more French with those 16th notes. Okay, now, sorry, that's better. Rhythmically, that's better. But speak French. Ta-da, ta-da. It's like going ta-da. The hard accents on the smallest note. Ta-da, ta-da. Ta-da, ta-da. Ta-da, ta-da. Ta-da. So you can, you can think pronunciation on, on the percussion instrument very much. Want to try that again? Yeah. Good, 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 good. Now looser hands. You stiffened up. Yeah. Okay, it's jazz. Good, 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 good. Nice mezzo forte too. Right. Um, uh, just one thing about the Hirianos, and then uh, then Jean Philippe uh, should jump in. Um, rum, dum, rum, dum, rum. Almost like roughs. Bing, bum, rum, bum, rum, bum, jump. Tight to the downbeat. Try it. So the accent happens on the downbeat, not on the grace note. Try it again. This is not a ta-da. This is a ta-da, ta-da, ta-da. Different pronunciation. Oh, I'm sorry. I think you're muted. Oh, sorry, sorry. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. That's good. That's good. Yeah. It swings more. Okay, jump it. Oh, uh, just a few things, uh, Robert. Uh, the again in the uh, in the Kadai, in the Harianos. So uh, this uh, when it happens in the opera, this this bit, it's the entrance of the emperor, and he he always treats it a little bit uh, ironic. Uh, and Pace worked with you on the those uh, Poggiatura notes. But that's where you make the irony a little bit. So try to see uh, how you can use them with a strong downbeat, of course, but how they can bring us this color a little bit. Uh, and you know, when you get to uh, rehearsal seven, I guess it is, also there, I'd like to feel a little stronger, the difference when the tagadam is on the beat and when it's uh, it's not on the beat. So uh, just try this excerpt again once. Yeah, nice. So you know, it's not necessarily an accent as just a little bit more weight. And uh, uh, let's try the beginning again and think a little bit about how this, this emperor is coming in and it's uh, 
Hey, uh, Kodai is making this uh, very, very ironic again. Yeah, nice. So it's almost like the appoggiaturas are kind of like making the fun a little bit out of the, the main melody, right? They're kind of breaking this perfect, like very official entrance music. Good, very nice. Uh, in the uh, in the Duca, in the uh, L'Apprenti Sorcier, uh, ta, 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 ta. I'd like to just get a little bit more difference uh, from when you don't have accents to where you have accents. So the first phrase doesn't, second phrase has those accents. How do you can bring that a little bit uh, without uh, changing too much the dynamic? Try again, just the beginning of that first excerpt. Yeah, very nice. So you you, uh, you did this very quickly, very flexible. It's great. And in the second excerpt, uh, try to bring out a little bit more of the strong beats to it goes from there. So not like uh, going towards the last eight note of the bar from the top. Great, and it kind of uh, helped the last eight note with the dot on it to swing a little bit too. If it's not the arrival point, right? It's the tug it pop, Great, uh, Robert, great playing, great audition. So uh, thank you for playing and we'll uh, jump now uh, to Theo. Alors on va aller à Theo. Bonjour Theo. Excerpt of uh, West Side Story by uh, Bernstein at the vibraphone. Uh, the three and the fourth uh, movement of uh, Sherazad uh, by uh, Rimsky Korsakov. Uh, Espana by uh, Emmanuel Chabrier at uh, the tambourine. And um, the second uh, piano concerto by uh, Rachmaninoff, uh, an excerpt uh, at the cymbals.
Merci beaucoup, Théo. Bravo. Très bonne audition. Uh, Pace, uh, why don't you start again? Okay, thanks. Nice playing. Yes, very nice playing. Can you do me a favor? And uh, the, uh, the Chabrier, can you uh, stand up, bring the drum, drum head up, and play that again for us. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. A stand and face us. And okay. you've got it memorized anyway. Yeah. Okay. That's it. Stand and face us as tall as you can. Yeah. So when you play a percussion instrument, you want to show the audience that you're there. You're in the back. Yeah. All the way back in the orchestra. It's okay? okay. No matter what the dynamic is. Oh, okay. But in this case, yeah, you you have to play the, the multiple rhythms, so you have to use your knee. But uh, you've got it memorized. Look at the conductor. Mm. Next part, letter L. Good, 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 good. Now I can tell you're playing soft, but can you show me you're soft? En leve, okay? Oh, okay. It's a different sound. It, that's wonderful. It's a completely different sound. That's fantastic. That's the perfect sound. Do it again. Show us your piano. Show us your dynamic. Good. Good, 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 good. Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The same thing with the with the tambour with the in Shahrazad. Uh, and at letter G, no crescendo, no crescendo on the on the on the rolls. Okay. Piano all the way through. In this, the the the. The drum writing is almost monotone. Do you know what I mean by monotone? Uh, no. Not this. Yeah, 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 monotone. Okay. Okay, try it. And can you stand up? Same thing. At the G? Yep. Okay. But on levé, stand up. Ah, okay. Sure, yeah. You have it memorized. You can look at us. No accent. No accent. No accent. What instrument are you accompanying? Uh, the little harmony, the woodwinds. Trumpet. You're with the trumpet. Trumpet's playing triplets. But you're playing. Yeah. So yeah. you're with you're with the trumpet. Try it again. But okay. like this, that's the trumpet. It's going to play like this. Almost, almost more horizontal. Okay. Okay. 
Try again. Say ça. Oui. Say ça. Bravo. Je flip. Yep, thanks, Face. Uh, uh, Théo, I, I was, j'allais uh, dans le chabrier, j'allais aussi uh, te demander uh, dans le, la, la section de la lettre L, uh, de nous faire sentir la différence où le triolet de double est situé. Mais quand, as changé le, quand tu l'as joué debout et tu as changé avec Face, le, la manière, tout uh, est tombé directement sous la main. Uh, ça, non seulement ça a réglé le son, mais ça a aussi réglé l'emphase rythmique de, de tout ce qui était placé. Donc, vraiment, le chapeau, puis tu l'as changé rapidement. Ça démontre une très bonne flexibilité. Euh, une petite chose pour moi, dans le West Side Story, euh, dans le, le, au début, 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 en fait, à chaque fois qu'on a la figure, ta, 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 si c'est possible de le refaire, puis d'essayer de ne de pas avoir d'accent sur le fa dièse, ta, 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 on a un peu l'impression que c'est le, le fa dièse qui est sur le temps. C'est un petit peu une relâche du dos. C'est le dos qui est lié, qui est sur le temps. Ça donne vraiment le, le caractère euh, euh, cool que Bernstein va aller chercher dans ça. Peux-tu nous le refaire, le, le début? Oui, ouais, presque, presque, presque. On a, normalement, c'est certain que le fa dièse va ressortir un tout petit peu plus. Hein, dans, le, dans la tessiture, il est plus haut. Donc, il faut compenser pour ça, surtout quand c'est dans l'octave au-dessus. J'ai encore un petit peu l'impression d'un accent sur le fa dièse. Je pense vraiment qu'il découle du dos. Vraiment, c'est le, 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 les temps forts. Le fa dièse découle du temps fort. Essayez-le une autre fois. Oui, c'est dans cette direction-là. Ouais. C'est vraiment d'aller chercher le ta, ta, ta. Il n'y a pas, pas d'énergie ou de. de, de il n'y a rien de, de très accentué sur ce fa dièse-là. Ta, 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 ta. Good, super. Merci beaucoup. Euh, très bonne audition. C'est super de t'entendre. Sorry, could I, add, could I add. Yeah, one please, please. OK. Please. That, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the music is good. You've, he's really helped you uh, with the music. Now. I want you to now be a percussionist as well. And there's a, there's a trick I like to do, which is this. And that's what actually they do in the, in the song. Yeah. They're clicking, but that's second beats. Can you set your metronome? Of course, he has a metronome because he's a percussionist. All musicians should have metronomes. Does that help? Yeah. Well, mu musically, I like it. You've got the music, but also the rhythm at the same time. You've got the swing, but it's right there. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Good. Good. Oh, wonderful. Thank you again, uh, Theo. And uh, maintenant, on va aller avec Simon. Let's go with Simon. Bonjour, Simon. Est-ce que tu peux juste nous dire quelques mots sur toi puis nous, euh, nous donner les, la liste des tracks? Bien sûr. Euh, 
je m'appelle Simon Veilleux, je commence mon baccalauréat euh, en percussion au Conservatoire de Montréal. Euh, J'étudie sous Hugues Tremblay et André Dufour. Euh, je vais commencer par jouer euh, Beethoven 9, euh, la fin du premier mouvement. Euh, je vais ensuite jouer la quatrième de Tchaïkovski, le premier mouvement. Euh, je vais enchaîner avec euh, le concerto pour orchestre à vent de euh, Franck Martin. Et je vais terminer avec la 39e symphonie majeure, le début.
Super. Merci. Euh, bravo beaucoup, euh, Simon. C'est super intéressant. Uh, Pace, uh, why don't you go first again? Okay, thank you. Very nice playing. Very nice playing. Uh, Mozart. Good choice of sticks. I want to change your pronunciation. Now, uh, do you know the, uh, the great conductor, Chela Badaki? Does, have you watched him conduct? Okay. Um, Pinkus Zuckerman met him many years ago. And he didn't know, because Pinkus was a famous violinist, but he was conducting as well. But as a violinist, Chela Badaki, okay, he's a great artist. Chela Badaki was a violinist as well. But uh, as a conductor, well, so he asked him a trick question. He said, Mozart 39, what's the important voice? And Pinka said, it's the timpani. Most conductors say, oh, it's the strings. Da, 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 you came in just a little bit early. So sing, sing the, the string part when you're not playing. Okay. Can you try that one hand? All one hand, just for practice. Even the, the Beatles, yeah. Now, same dynamic. With both. Because you played bomb, then it got softer. Ba, ba, ba. Same dynamic, one hand. That was ta da da, ta ta ta, ta ta ta. Right. Yeah. Good. Now two hands. No, don't rush. Don't rush. Don't rush. Sorry. Sorry. It's okay. Never. You don't. You don't have to apologize. We're searching. Sorry, you don't have to apologize. We're searching. Okay. It's, it's very good. We're trying to put it here. It, this is where it is. It's very good. We're trying to take it up here. Okay. Okay, the lower drum doesn't sound as loud. So we have to make sure it still has the same articulation. It's a bigger head, so we have more vibration. It still has, the, has to have the same character. That's very good. That's good. Do you understand what I'm, what I'm saying? Okay, good, good. Jean-Philippe. Yeah, great, uh, super, uh, Simon. Uh, une petite chose pour moi dans le Tchaikovsky. Euh, si tu peux nous aider un tout petit peu plus sur le Allegro con anima, ce qui est juste après P, on a besoin de sentir un tout petit peu plus. Tu peux aider vraiment tout l'orchestre ici. On a, on a, on a l'impression, pop, 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 pop. C'est les, euh, tes deuxième et troisième croches sont vraiment un rebond du premier temps. Peux-tu l'essayer peut-être de la lettre, c'est quoi? Il y a une lettre, euh, lettre T. Oui, 
Ben, essaye en, en, encore plus, exagère-le un tout petit peu, puis après ça, on en enlèvera, mais essaye de me faire vraiment sentir. Ce n'est pas nécessairement un accent non plus. Le phrasé doit, doit être influencé ça aussi beaucoup. Pas, pas grave. C'est là que ton poids doit tomber. faire beaucoup mieux, puis c'est vraiment de nous, euh, nous replacer sur les bons temps. Tu vas aider tout le monde comme ça, puis euh, c'est plus clair. C'est presque de penser que tu aurais un octave. Bon, Et si on avait l'octave en bas sur le fa, on aurait na naturellement peut-être un peu plus de poids d'en face dessus. C'est ce même genre de sentiment-là, mais évidemment sans, sans l'octave. Euh, oui, j'ai beaucoup aimé euh, le, ce que, comme ce que tu as changé avec Pace dans le Mozart. C'est vraiment, euh, vraiment ça. Puis c'est la voix humaine aussi, c'est l'opéra. C'est vraiment une mélodie, chaque note est chantée. C'est super intéressant. Euh, dans le... Un petit peu que je retrouve la partition. Excuse-moi. Ici, dans le Beethoven. Euh, Qu'est-ce que tu as choisi comme baguette dans le Beethoven? Okay. Assez molle, mais avec un peu, avec un peu de quand même. As-tu déjà essayé avec quelque chose d'un tout petit peu, plus, euh, petit peu plus dur, un tout petit peu plus euh, punché? Euh, je n'ai pas pensé beaucoup de temps sur ce trait-là en particulier pour essayer différents types de baguettes. Euh, J'ai vu d'autres qui le jouaient avec des, des plus durs, euh, mais j'en avais pas en ma possession une, un modèle qui serait entre les deux. Euh, oui. Déjà utilisé pour le Mozart et, et ça. Oui, mais, mais ça vaut la peine d'essayer là pour le fun parce que tu vas peut-être découvrir d'autres choses. Puis c'est toujours bon d'essayer de, 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 le plus de versions possible euh, jusqu'au temps qu'il y en ait une qui t'accroche vraiment à l'oreille. Puis c'est comme ça, si un comité te demande aussi, euh, pouvez-vous changer le, le son, la baguette, tu as quelque chose rapidement à démontrer. Mais euh, vraiment, là, super, super niveau, euh, Simon. C'était vraiment euh, super intéressant de, de t'écouter. Merci beaucoup euh, pour d'avoir joué avec nous aujourd'hui. Uh, thanks to our percussionists, and now we're going to move to our horn players. Maintenant, on va s'en aller dans le corps français et on va commencer avec Bertie. Bonjour, Bertie. Bonjour. Uh, hi, my name is Bertie Cassieux. Uh, I'm French and I study, I'm studying at the Royal College of Music. So um, I'm going to play Brahms third uh, symphony, third movement first. Uh, then uh, Beethoven Fidelio, uh, then uh, Haydn Symphony Number no. 55, the finale, and uh, to finish uh, Don Juan. Thank <laughs> you. 
Merci Bertie, bravo. Euh, quelques petits euh, commentaires euh, dans le Haydn. Donc Haydn nous met un accent sur la première croche. Pas, je ne pense pas que c'est nécessairement un accent comme on pourrait penser percussif ou quelque chose de... de je pense qu'il veut un tout petit peu plus d'emphase, un tout petit peu plus de poids sur cette note-là. C'est aussi une mélodie qui se promène, qui monte. Donc, est-ce que tu peux nous le faire ressortir un tout petit peu plus en exagérant parce qu'évidemment, tout ce qui est plus aigu va ressortir plus. Que ce registre-là soit vraiment c'est presque ce que tu pensais, je ne veux pas dire une ligne, là, mais il y a presque quelque chose d'un tout petit peu plus mélodique qui se passe sur, le, sur son accent. OK. Et je me demandais par rapport au tempo si c'était plus rapide ou plus long que ce que j'ai fait. Euh, ça peut être demandé des deux côtés, peut-être un tout petit peu plus rapide, mais c'est un bon tempo. Euh, on veut toujours être dans un tempo central, puis d'en avoir un près de chaque côté de, du tempo que, te, que tu as déjà. Comme ça, ça démontre une flexibilité qui est, qui est intéressante. Bon, essaye là, Bertie, puis pense vraiment, pour les, les pratiquer, pour l'exagérer, Ajoute une ligne dessus. Ta -ta -ta -ti -ta. Ouais, maintenant, juste la raccourcir un tout petit peu, mais c'est garder cette même genre d'attaque puis de précision. Comme ça, tu nous fais ressortir la mélodie qui est dans, le, dans les graves aussi. Mmh. Super, c'était très bien. Le... J'avais un petit quelque chose dans... Un petit peu, je vais retrouver la page. Dans Don Juan. Donc, euh... Qu quelle image tu as quand tu joues ce trait-là, musicalement? Qu Qu'est-ce qu que tu vois ou à quoi tu t'apparentes? Tu euh, bah pour moi, il faut que ce soit très soutenu et euh, pas, de, pas de gap euh, dans le son, quoi. Oui, super. Puis plus, euh, si tu as une image en tête, qu qu'est-ce qu que tu vois? Est-ce que c'est héroïque? Est-ce que c'est plus romantique? Est -ce que... Oui, non, plutôt héroïque, oui. Plutôt héroïque, super. Euh, Est-ce que tu peux faire une plus grande différence? Euh, parce que Strauss nous met seulement un forte sur la première phrase, puis ensuite deux F. Donc, garde-toi un tout petit peu euh, de volume pour vraiment qu'on l'entende clairement, surtout dans un contexte d'audition. Okay. Euh, tu n'as pas besoin de le refaire, c'est juste un commentaire général de nous garder vraiment un, que ça soit clair à notre oreille qu'on a une différence de, de nuance. Euh, c'était très beau, c'était très lié. Euh, Peut-être un tout petit peu plus quand tu as les, les petites valeurs. Il met les lignes dessus, donc de les penser avec autant de, de, de chanter, de vibrato, pense à la voix aussi dans tout ça, mais c'était vraiment, vraiment très musical. Bravo, puis je vais laisser Pace. Euh, te donner ses commentaires. Okay. Up to you, Pace. Okay, thank you. Yeah, nice playing. Nice playing. Uh, could we do the bronze? Oh, should I do it again? Uh, yes, but you're going to sing. Uh, okay. <laughs> And because you're from France, that means you solfege. Right. I'm sorry, I'm what? <laughs> you solfege. Do, re, si. Oh, that's yeah. Do, re, si. Okay, wait, so with the with the notes. Okay. Uh, can I sing them in F or? <laughs> okay. Right, thank you. It doesn't matter what okay. key. Sol, la, si, re, do, la. Sol, la, si, fa, mi, la, la, si, do, mi, re, si, re, do, sol, la, sa, fa, sol, la, si, si, do, fa, mi, la, re, do, sol, la, sa, fa, la, si, la, re. Okay. Not 
bad. That's too bad. Okay. Now, you sang it like a folk song. Okay. <laughs> and you sing it like Brahms. If you were playing the viola. Already. Try to open the vowel. So far away. So far away. Right. Uh, should I sing it or play it? Sing, sing it. Okay. So let's hear it all. Is it better? <laughs> okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now so mezzo piano. That's a piano. Yeah. Mezzo piano in the voice. Already, already, uh, as open as possible. So let's right, good, good. Now, if you were an opera singer, would you go, ah, uh, already? Would you, already, so far away? Okay, drop the voice down so it's not opera. So la si re do la, so la si fa mi la, la si do mi re si re do so la so fa so la si si do. Now play. Play what you just sang with the same breath. The same breath. <laughs> interesting i'm going to do instant replay you know what that is instant replay like in sports someone scores a goal and then they show it again on videotape okay this is the first time do re re so fa re do re re da 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 di da da okay now this time you went da 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 So the second breath turned into the old breath. Okay. okay. I want you to do this again. And every breath is a first breath. This is for all the wind and brass players. I'm saying I'm doing this for you, for also for them. Every breath is a first breath. Every breath. Was the old breath and you choked okay uh, <laughs> you get the point you understand what i'm yeah yeah we have to practice how we breathe but every breath is a first breath good that was so much better beautiful beautiful unless uh, merci beaucoup uh, Bertie. and uh, we will go to shane Hi, Shane. Hello. Are you hearing me okay? Yeah, that's good. Great. So, um, if you can just tell us a little bit about you and the excerpts, then it's uh, I'll let you. 
Sure. Um, uh, yeah, my name is Shane. Uh, I'm in Los Angeles right now, um, but in a few weeks I will be uh, moving to New York to join uh, the orchestra now at Bard College. Um, so today I'm going to play uh, all fourth horn excerpts. I'll be playing uh, from the third movement of Beethoven Ninth Symphony, um, some from the opening of uh, Ein Heldenleben, opening of Tchaikovsky IV, and um, a bit from the first movement of Mahler Third Symphony.
The, the moving notes are a little bit heavy. You're getting away the long notes. You're losing speed in the Mahler, mm. which means you're losing to be or not to be. That is the question, to be or not to be. You know, the rhythm of the speech, you're losing that. And it's, it's, it's a paraphrase of the trombone solo. So it, it, it needs that. Um, let's, I want to do the Tchaikovsky. Mm -hmm. Do you know who Phil Myers was? Yes. Okay. What's your immediate, when I say Phil Myers, what's the first thing that comes into your mind? Uh, Principal Horn of New York Phil. Okay. What else? Um, not a ton. I, I, I don't listen to New York, uh, Harmonic okay. recordings that much. I knew him slightly. Um, uh, when I think of Phil Myers, I think of Loud. He auditioned for our orchestra in Ottawa, and uh, the they were replacing uh, a principal horn that couldn't play soft enough. So he had a friend in the orchestra who told him this. So he came prepared to play soft. So uh, they didn't hire anybody. They kept our principal horn and they ended up firing in the next season. It's, it's, it's the conductor. It's a long story. And so um, uh, Phil Myers had a friend of, in our orchestra and he went to the conductor and said, uh, well, Phil is going to be um, auditioning again. And our conductor said, well, he needn't bother. And the, his friend said, why? He said, because he can't possibly play loud enough to play in our orchestra. Okay, that's an oxymoron, yes. So, but Phil Myers uses that story in, in master classes. And he said, after that, he played as loud as he could in every audition and never lost. Hmm. Okay, now, the let's do the Tchaikovsky. Okay. With that in I, mind. 
I don't. Yes. Well, the, more. I don't want to hear Shane. I want to hear Phil Myers. Mm. You breathe very well. You don't use a full breath. You don't use your full capacity, but you still are very relaxed when you breathe. This time, breathe for capacity. It's it's not an artistic breath. It's a breath for function. Simply fill up the gas tank. Drive 300 miles before you have to fill again, rather than put in a little gas, drive 50 miles, refill it up. 50 miles, refill, 50 miles, okay? Yeah. And let's play very Russian, which means very long, as we've heard in the in the talk about Russian music, very long notes. Ba, 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 ba. Play through the eighth notes. Give us the style, yes. Give yourself help with the breathing to play fortissimo. Okay. Let's try it. Sorry, I wasn't sure if you... No, that's okay. That's better. That's better. So what's your articulation? Ta, da, hard da, soft da, uh, an American ta, an American band ta? Um, well, yeah, I, I uh, a ta, but I, I know you know uh, my teacher, Denise, so it should be, should be his idea of ta, but. <laughs> okay. Well, check us, you wrote in a French style. Mm -hmm. As long as you don't use the, lose the Russian length, you can use the French articulation. Mm -hmm. Very clear articulation, but put that together and then yeah. uh, give it a try. Okay, that was a nice mezzo forte. That's better. Jean Philippe. Thank you, Shane. Uh, wonderful. Uh, if I can add just a little bit in that Tchaikovsky, mm -hmm. it's uh, when paces say long notes, it's totally exactly what, the, the right thing. And the 16 as well, this is, you don't want this to, to get to a polonaise or something that's uh, swinging up the beats a little bit. It's, uh, it's not a polonaise, right? It has a mo mostly like a, almost a funeral march quality to it. Ta 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 ta. So lots of uh, lots of love and uh, on those sixteen as well. A uh, couple of things. Uh, if we go to other excerpts, uh, Beethoven. So Beethoven, when you get Shane to don't let go of the first eight note. It, this gives the quality and this gives the uh, the character to what's coming after. It needs to be part of the melody. But right now we have ta, ta, da, 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 transpose this to the uh, to the first eight note. You want to try that again, maybe from uh, just the long note that's before. Sure. <laughs> Good. Do it again and really make when you get to that eight note, everything that you want musically to happen on the 16 that comes after, implement it to that eight note as well. So it kind of goes from there. Yeah, so that's in, in that spirit, so that 
this melody is fully from uh, from the eight in the strauss in the uh, einhelden leben a little bit of this also when you get to uh, an example rehearsal 10 ba, 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 the first triplets, if it would be opera, the melody, the words would start there, right? So we get more on the quarter note, but it's the same thing, more weight on the bottom lines. Uh, so we get that full melody. It will, you know, we need to compensate also a little bit for register, but uh, beautiful sound. Thank you very much, uh, Shane. Wonderful to hear you today, too. Thank you to all of you who uh, played for us today. Merci à tout le monde qui a joué avec nous aujourd'hui. Pace, thank you very much again for uh, your advices and the wonderful sure, uh, teachings. Uh, merci à tout le monde uh, qui nous a écouté uh, de nos musiciens de l'orchestre. Uh, merci aussi au public qui nous écoute sur YouTube en direct. Thanks to all of our musicians and thanks to you if you're listening via YouTube live. Just before we go, uh, EOF uh, would like to thank again our sponsors. Uh, nous aimerions remercier nos commanditaires. L'OF reconnaît l'appui du gouvernement du Canada ainsi que de Emploi Québec et de Montréal. Nous remercions nos commanditaires privés, Canimex et Panorama Media. Et l'OF remercie les fondations suivantes, la Fondation RBC, la Fondation Sibila SE, le Fonds AIDA des Jeunesses Musicales du Canada et la Fondation de la Famille Zeller. Thanks to all those sponsors. Merci à tous et bonne journée.